Hello everyone. All right, so the next program in chapter seven is number analysis program. Okay, design a program that asks the user to enter a series of 20 numbers. The program should store the numbers in a list and then display the following data. The lowest number in the list, the highest number in the list, the total of the numbers in the list, the average of the numbers in the list. Okay, so let's start. All right, so as always, we're going to break our program into functions. And the first function I want to create, well, let's read the first line. It says, design a program that asks the user to enter a series of 20 numbers. So let's create our first function to, to get the user input. Okay, so I'm going to define a function, and I'm going to call it get user numbers. <clears throat> All right, so now we have to de determine if this function is going to accept in any argument so we can define any parameters. The program said we should ask the user to enter a series of 20 numbers. <clears throat> so I guess we can write our code to accept 20 numbers, or we can even make it even we can make it better by making it flexible. We can create a parameter here, which is going to represent how many numbers that the, this function should get from the user. <clears throat> Sorry. And so I'm going to create a parameter. I'm going to call it number of user numbers. So number of user numbers is basically anyone who calls this function has to pass in the number of user numbers this function should generate or generate. All right, so what it means is we have to create a loop to loop this number of times. And each time it's going to ask the user to enter um, a number. So I'm going to create a for loop. Now I like to use indexing to access numbers. Um, in a loop, um, basically, for example, you can use an indexes to or in indices to access numbers in a list. For example, I like to use index indexes basically in my loops. So I'm going to use that method here, and I'll explain. So for current user number, let's see. For current user number, I like to add the index because really we're dealing with indexes. I'll explain that in a second. So for current user number in range, I'm going to create a range of basically this number of user numbers. So assuming the user typed in, let's say, 20, it's going to look like this. Basically, when I type in 20, this range function is going to uh, create a range from 0 to 19. Okay, This 20 here is like the ending limit, but it's not included in the range. Okay, It's like the ending limit. It's not, it's not included. If you type in 20, it's going to generate a range from 0 to 19. If you type in 7, it's going to generate a range from 0 to, to six, seven is not included. All right, so over here, I'm going to type in the number of user numbers. So, so again, if the user types in 20, um, this this loop here is still going to iterate 20 times, right? Because when you count, when you count from zero to 19, zero, one, two, three, four, five, all the way into 19, it's 20, 20, a 20 count. So it's still going to loop 20 times but then it's going to create a range from 0 to 19. And, and what it's going to do is that each time the loop iterates, the, the very first time, it's going to assign 0 to current, current user number index. Second time it iterates, it's going to assign 1 to current user number index. And in other loops, uh, not, not particularly with this one, but in other loops, you can use the, index, the indices or the indexes to access elements in, let's say, a list or something like that. Or we can use it on, in our code. All right, so I'm going to loop this number of times. And each time I want to ask the user to enter a number. So I'm going to use the input function, and I'm going to tell the user, please, actually, let's say, please enter um, number. And actually, the, the, the good thing here is we can use the current user number, what, whatever number is stored in here. It's going to be assigned 0 all the way to 19, right? 0 is basically going to be the index of the first item, right? So... Uh, if, you're, if you're confused about an index, index and indexes, don't worry. You, you, you'll have a good sense uh, moving forward. So I, wa I want to say, please enter number one. And then the next time I wanted to say, please enter number two. But because it's going to assign, be assigned zero all the way to 19, the first time, if it's assigned zero, zero is really re representing the first item. And so if I add one to it, it's going to be one. The index of one will re really represents in the second item. If I add one to it, then it's going to say, please enter number two. So please enter, I'm going to concatenate it to the current user number. The, the very first time I iterate, it's going to be zero, right? So 
but that's really the first item. Zero is representing the first item. So I'm going to add one to it just so it reads as please enter number one. I'm going to surround it with parentheses because I want this to evaluate. Well, the same thing, but I want this to evaluate. Okay, so over here I'm concatenating a string to a number here. This is going to evaluate to a number. When you try to do that, you know, explicitly uh, yourself, um, you're going to get an error, right? So you can concatenate an int to um, to a string this way. You'd have to make sure this is a string before you can concatenate. When you try to concatenate a string to a string, you have no problem. So I'm going to call the string function around all of this here. So str around all of this. Okay, around all of this. So I'm concatenating this this value here. Even if it's a it's a number, I'm concatenating it to a string, so I can concatenate it to this string here. So please enter number. It will tell us whatever number we are on. And I'm actually going to go ahead and concatenate another string to it, which is going to be a colon and a space. All right. So over here you can see that you can see that I'm exceeding this line over here. I don't know if you can see it, but this line is like an, uh, a guideline for me not to exceed around 79 characters in a line. So it's a Python standard not to exceed around 70 characters in a line. So 79 characters in a line. 79. And so I want to follow that. So that means I need to break this line into two. So I'm going to break it somewhere around here. What I care is I can break it here too, but I want to break it somewhere around here. And before you do, before you break any line, you have to type in the backslash. So I'm going to type in the backslash and hit enter. I've broken this line into two, but the line still works. It's, it doesn't affect its functionality. It's just for, for, for a visual look. All right. So, so I'll ask the user to enter a number. The user will enter a number. The input function is going to return whatever the user has typed as a string. But here's a case we need a number. We can't really use strings in calculations. And so we need to convert everything that the user has typed to a number. In this case, we want um, an int, right? Let's, let's assume that the, the user is going to enter, let's say an int. And so I'm going to call the int function around everything that the input function, basically everything that the user has typed, everything that the user, user is, um, has typed and the, input, and, and the input function is returning. I'm going to convert that to an int. Then I'm going to, so basically when, once the input function converts that to an int, we need a place to store it. And so I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call it user number. So user number is going to store whatever the input function re is returning, converted to an int. Um, yeah, right? <clears throat> I hope it makes sense. User number is going to store whatever the input function is returning, converted to an int. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so once we have a, a particular user number, the program over here says that we should ask the user to enter, enter 20 numbers, a series of 20 numbers, and the program should store the numbers in, in a list, So that, which means we need a list to store these numbers. So up here, I'm going to declare a list, and I'm going to call it user, user numbers. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> I don't know what's happening. Let me just drink a little bit of water. <clears throat> All right, sorry about that. All right, so we need a place to store these numbers. I'm going to create a list. I'm going to call it user numbers list. I'd like to add a list just so we know it's a list. And I'm going to initialize it to an empty list. So over here, at any time when we get a number in the next line, let's append that number to this list. The way we do that, you do that is by referring to this list here. So it's going to be user numbers list dot append and what are we appending to the list we're appending the user number we get at a particular time so by the each time each time it iterates it appends that number the user typed to this list so by the time this loop is done we'll have our numbers stored in the list so outside the loop when we are done iterating collecting all the numbers we return the user numbers list and then we'll, and then we're done with this function this function will prompt the user to type in all the numbers we'll store it in the list and return the list the next thing I want us to do is to find the lowest number in the list. So let's define a function. I'm going to call it find lowest number. Oops. Again, we have to figure out if this function is going to accept any arguments. Yes. It's going to, first of all, take our list, our list of numbers, and it's going to find the lowest number. So let's define a parameter which is going to serve as a placeholder for our list. I'm going to call it the same name as the as what we have here, which is user numbers list. 
now it doesn't matter you matter you're using the same name here it doesn't matter the scope of this variable here is within this find lowest number function and the scope of this uh, well, this, well this is a parameter right? the scope of that is within this find lowest number f function and the scope of this user numbers list is within the get users numbers function oh, sorry get user numbers function so it doesn't matter if you use the same name okay, so they are like twins but they're not the same they are considered different because they are in different functions and we'll see this over and over again so it doesn't matter if you use the same names this is just a name referring to the parameters all right so we need to just find the lowest number on this list here so there is a function called min m i n which will basically take in a list as an argument in this case our user numbers list and it will return the lowest number in that list that's it so if it's returning the lowest number in this list then we need a place to store it so i'm going to create a variable i'm going to call it lowest number and lowest number is going to receive whatever the min function is returning uh, from this list it's going to be our lowest number so once we have our lowest number let's go ahead and return it return lowest number and we're done with this function too so find highest the find finding the highest number is going to be the same as this i'm going to make a copy of this it's going to be similar not ex not, not exactly the same but similar so we have to change a few things so i'm going to call this find highest number All right, so find find highest number it's still going to take our user our user numbers list and there's a function called max instead of uh, min we are calling max and we are passing in the user numbers list and the max is going to return the highest number in that list and uh, it's going to return it so when it's returning it we need a place to store it so I'm going to cr um, create a variable called highest number and highest number is going to store that value when we're done with it or, or basically when we are, when we get the highest number we can go ahead and return it let's return it and we're done with this function as well the next is to find the total of the numbers in a list so let's define a function that's going to calculate the total calculate total of numbers all right so we have to again determine if this, if this function is going to accept any arguments yes it's going to need a list of numbers in order to calculate the total of all of them and so let's create a par parameter here we define a parameter here and that parameter is also going to be the same as the user numbers list it's going to take a list in this case I happen I'm just calling this list uh, this placeholder user numbers list whoever calls this function has to pass in a list in place of user numbers list again it doesn't matter you're using the same names the scope of this variable or in this case this part this uh, list here is, is within this function and the scope of the other the list are within their individual functions okay so calculate total of numbers well really when you're calculating the total it's the sum of all the numbers in the list divided by um, how many oh actually hold on and never mind never mind I was thinking of average of numbers all right so to calculate the total is basically the sum of all the numbers in the list the sum which means we need to go through all the numbers in the list and add them all up which means we'll need a list uh, sorry a loop so I'm going to create a for loop again I remember I said we I like to use index in here this time around we're going to use the indexes actually to identify the numbers in the in the list it's going to be similar to that actually the same so there are numbers stored in this list so for current user number index in range I'm going to create a range and the range since this is a list the range I'm going to call a function called len it's going to be the length of the user numbers list how many numbers there are there are in this list so if this list contains 20 numbers then 20 will be stored here I'm just going to type in 20 what it means is this range function is going to create a range from 0 to 19 it's going to iterate 20 times but it's going to generate a range from 0 to 19 20 is like the ending limit but it's not included what it's going to do with that range of 0 to 19 is the first time it iterates it's going to assign first number which is 0 to current user number index and we can use it in our loop or we can use it to access elements in the list second time it iterates it's going to assign 
1 to current user number index, and so on and so forth, all the way to 19. Again, 20 is not included, like the ending limit, but it's not included. Okay, so um, I'm not going to type in 20 here. Basically, uh, I'm going to I'm going to, it's going to be the length of the list, basically. If there are 20 items in the list, then it's going to be resulted to 20, which means it's going to generate items from 0 to 19. All right. So each time, what we want to do is we want to take that number and, uh, and accumulate it, right? So we need an accumulator, right? So up here, I'm going to create one. I'm going to call it total of numbers. Total of numbers is going to be equal to 0 initially. We are going to add numbers to this, accumulate numbers to this. So each time it iterates, we need to target a particular number on the list, the first number, then, then, the, sec then the second number, third number, and add it all up. So total is going to be equal to what's already stored in total plus the particular number we are on in the list as we iterate um, or loop through it. So I'm going to refer to the list and the particular number using our current user number index. So the first time user number index is zero, we are, we are basically referring to the first number in the list. If the user number index is one, we are referring to the second number in the list. What we are doing is we are taking what's already stored in zero. So the first time it iterates, total will be zero. If let's say the first element in the list is let's say five, it's going to be zero plus five, which all results to five. And then we are taking five and storing it in total. So the second time the loop iterates, total will be set to five. Assuming the second number in the list is lit, is two, is two, right? So it's going to be five plus two, which all results to seven, and then seven is stored in total here. So by the time this loop is done, we will have our total. Actually, it's not supposed to be total. It's supposed to be total of numbers. I call the variable, I name the variable total of numbers. So total of numbers is going to be equal to what's already stored in total of numbers plus, plus the, the particular number. Okay, so so basically you get idea. We are accumulating each time. So by the time this loop is done, we'll have all the numbers stored in total of numbers, this variable here. You can see again, I'm exceeding this line, so I'm going to break it somewhere around here. Before I break a line, I type in a backslash and hit enter. So outside this loop, when it's done, iterating, we, want, we will have our total of numbers. So let's go ahead and return our total of numbers. And we're done with this function as well.